name's Nate Hartness. I started an Etsy store. Uh, it all started when I was watching movies as a kid with my dad uh, and my mom. They showed me movies like Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Blade Runner, all these really good classics. Uh, and as I got older, I started to notice the the set design, the props, uh, all the like nitty gritty details that went into it. Um, and I started wanting some of those for myself. And the easiest way to get those is to make it. Uh, so I started looking at 3D printers. I went from that to having a whole workshop making these things. And I figured out one day I should be selling these things. And so I made an Etsy store. So this is my studio space. Converted the master bedroom into a full studio. Uh, I work with the 3D printers around here. Uh, it kind of goes into like storage, uh, more like shipping and stuff like that. Uh, over here, this is where I do most of my work, like on the desk. Uh, it's my main work table. Uh, tons of storage. Storage is super key when it comes to doing any kind of work like this. Uh, just staying organized and having all of the things that you need to be organized helps a lot. Uh, paint, paint booth that is discreetly hidden inside of the, the shelf. Uh, I have a metal storage uh, bin that's basically made for all of the uh, thinners and different things like that that are flammable. Um, then I have my desk area where I do a lot of my 3D modeling. Uh, I, I usually chill out over here in this room as well. I play games and uh, all sorts of stuff like that. And then with my desk I also have the display shelf that uh, sits and displays all the things that I've made. It kind of gives me inspiration every day um, to go on and make a bunch of things. Well, I started the store uh, mainly because I had a hobby that was kind of overrunning my life. Um, and that's like all I was focusing on. I was putting all my energy into it uh, nonstop. Uh, and people were telling me like, hey, those are like movie quality things that you're making. You could like actually sell those. And uh, I had like toyed with the idea of like an Etsy store before, um, but just didn't really ever think about going in into an Etsy store just because it's it's very complicated. And uh, But eventually just kind of did it. I mean, I put a couple things on the store, uh, those things sold, put more things on it, those sold. And I was like, okay, Maybe I need to actually like put some work into this. Um, buy like all the merchandising stuff, you know, buy like the boxes and buy everything in bulk and and it just kind of like went, everything just kind of like went together, you know, everything like one thing after the other after the other. And it's like, oh, I'm an Etsy store now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I have a thousand plus sales now. And like, I actually, uh, I'm actually a big store now. Uh, and so it all just kind of, uh, came together really oddly. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> Introduction to 3D printing was, uh, of course, just like media in general. Um, seeing like Twitter posts or Instagram posts of people making things, uh, just like those typical 3D printer uh, things that you see where, you know, like it's on like a social media platform and they're just like, look at this cool thing that I 3D printed. And uh, I just kind of bought the cheapest 3D printer you could buy. And I started out that way, just making like little trinkets around my house. Uh, after that, I started thinking like, oh, I could make like an actual like costume with this. Uh, and then Mandalorian, uh, the Star Wars The Mandalorian came out in 2019. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna 3D print a whole cosplay for that. I'm gonna do that. And I still don't have it done. It's still a project that's going on. Um, but that's really what started it. It was like, ooh, maybe I should get a bigger 3D printer and to 3D print the armor, and uh, maybe I should get nicer filament and uh, 
start print, start making the props. They start making like the, the blaster and the armor and painting it. And <laughs> luckily, we moved, and I had the space to actually uh, have like a spray booth and paint it all. So uh, it's another one of those things where it's just kind of like you start off with like the smallest possible thing you could imagine, and it turns into like just like a snowball effect of like I'm gonna get the bigger 3D printer. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. And, <laughs> At this point, I just don't know where it's going to stop, and I don't think it's going to stop. I, I think it's definitely going to go into, like, I'm going to have a studio and a warehouse kind of thing, where, I'm, where I have, like, hundreds of 3D printers. So a typical work week, um, I usually start out with the orders. I usually start out... Uh, Finding all the orders that I need to get done for the week, I look that up on the website uh, that I use, and I go through, collect all those items from the boxes that I have organized, um, get the 3D printers going on whatever things need to be printed, whatever is low in stock, and then I will uh, start sanding those orders, and that can take anywhere from like a day to a day and a half, uh, and then I go into uh, priming, wet sanding. And then from wet sanding I go to painting, and that's a real fun part. Painting is where you get to see everything come together. After painting, you go into weathering, and that's just the best part. That's like, um, I'm not generally a messy person, but I like to actually weather these props because it, it gives the life to them. It gives, it tells the story. I mean, you look at, you look at something that's brand new, and you think, oh, it's never been anywhere, no one's ever owned it. It brand new you know when you start weathering it and making it look like it's been dropped or like it's been carried in a backpack for a long time it really looks like it has uh, years on it like people have used this and that's huge that's um, when it comes to the movie industry you want things to look in that universe after I'm done with that I usually ship them out and that's generally a whole week so this is the first step of the process uh, is of finishing the 3D print. This is a raw print and I'm going to sand it and then once I'm done sanding it I am going to primer it and that primer basically is a filler primer so it fills in all the layer lines that 3D prints usually get. Alright, so this is the primering process. It's the process where I put filler primer onto the actual prop, basically fills in those layers, uh, and then I can go through and smooth that out. Alright? Alright, so this is the part where I take the uh, now primered uh, and cured prop, and I'm going to wet sand it to make it really smooth. Uh, and that really smooth out all those lines once and for all. All right, so now I'm gonna airbrush this. Uh, this part specifically just needs a couple coats of a black, and then I will go through and clear coat it, and this part will be done. All right, so this is the desk. Uh, this is where I do all of my work, uh, 3D printing wise, market research, uh, any kind of uh, grabbing orders for my store, just seeing what people have been buying. Uh, I use a shipping label, label printer to print all the labels. Uh, I used to print them in paper, but uh, definitely bought a label printer pretty quick. All right, so usually I start the day and I kind of check out where my store is standing like just check out uh, what orders I have going on when they're due I usually organize them so right now I have 
uh, six orders that are in the phase of sanding. Uh, and that's for next week. And I can see all that. I can see uh, if it's gonna be like a raw 3D print, if it's gonna be like uh, fully painted and weathered. Um, and I basically move them throughout the phases as the weeks go, or as the days go for the through the week. Um, I can see all the new orders. Uh, with my Etsy store, I can, I also, a big part of it is messaging the customers and things like that. So uh, I can go through my messages. Also, the most important part is the listings, um, like setting the price, the description and everything, uh, like going into them, doing the photos, uh, doing like a full description, making sure you put like the legal notice, uh, that this is considered fan art, um, all that kind of good stuff, setting the price, setting the shipping dates, um, going through and like, checking out like my conversion rates, uh, checking out like the revenue. Uh, then you can also see like uh, how shoppers are finding you like uh, through direct tra traffic or advertised traffic, social media, uh, all kinds of stuff. And it tells you like what the orders went through. Some of my favorite props uh, and projects to have made uh, so far are generally the ones that take the most time. I mean, those are the most frustrating ones, but at the end, you've put so much time into it. Um, I do have ones where I've had multiple iterations. Um, uh, definitely one of my favorites is the Mandalorian Blaster. That's uh, from Star Wars, and uh, this is my second iteration of it. Uh, so. It's been over a year and a half since I made the first one, so just being able to see the, uh, the culmination of all my skills, um, like going in from the first one, uh, which is just kind of black and with some gray here and there, <laughs> and then the weathering is just kind of, there's no real grime or anything to it, it's just kind of me taking like some silver paint and going onto it. Um, and the handle is just kind of like me self-painting wood. Uh, when it comes to stuff like that, just seeing the culmination of all of the other projects I've done add to my experience and uh, add to something that uh, just looks super realistic and at the end you're just like, this is, this is what I'm doing it for. It's like to have a prop that looks like it's from the movie. Um, uh, a funny story about this one, uh, I didn't know when I first started my Etsy store that uh, the United States requires people to have uh, orange tips on any kind of uh, gun-like thing, but isn't a real gun. Um, so I had to start producing these orange caps for my, my blasters, uh, because I got an email one day saying, hey, we might have to fine you and take you to jail if you keep producing these, because technically it is illegal arms dealing. <laughs> And so a guy like me could have been considered an illegal arms dealer compared to whoever you think might be an illegal arms dealer. Like, I, uh, I don't think I would stand up to that in prison, to be honest. Uh, so I'm very happy that they gave me a warning. Uh, I do have an orange tip on it, uh, and I will sell it with an orange tip all the time. Uh, that's how I'm going to do it. Uh, you can take it off if you want to. <laughs> um, another prop that took a lot of time was this, which... I think a prop really needs to come with accessories and things that kind of make the prop what it is. Um, so with my Indiana Jones props, I had this really cool idea of finding an old box uh, and finding old papers, old tickets, uh, just old tickets and old books. Like this book is from, I believe it's like from 1911 and it just has a ton of history to it. Like it's falling apart at the seams, but cool book about classic mythology from like 1911. Um, and Indiana Jones took place in like the forties. So uh, I really felt like it was in universe. Like that's something like they would have gotten from his college. Uh, they would have had on hand, you know? Um, just finding like these old, 
uh, old postcards, like some of these are from 1910, 1904, uh, up to like the 1940s, just really old postcards. Um, and then copying some pages from uh, his journal. Eventually I'd like to have his journal, but copying some pages, just kind of throwing it in there. All to make this prop look really good. I mean, I think it looks damn good already, but when you add accessories around it and things to make it look in, in universe, it just really pulls it all together. Um, but this one has definitely taken a lot of time. It was another one of those ones like the blaster where I, uh, I started a long time ago. I was, I've been selling it for a long time and I just knew that it needed an update. Uh, so for this one, I went, I pulled out all the stops, you know, I, I researched how, uh, the original prop makers made it. I researched what they did, um, and they used clay, but I have 3D printers, so I just kind of made something that looks like clay uh, and use my painting skills to even further that, make it look like clay. Um, but just the weathering process on this one, uh, the gold foiling on it, everything just really pulls it together. Uh, and when you stick it in that box, it just looks like something that you would find in that universe, and that's really big for me. Uh, even down to like making the stamp that the post office that Indiana Jones would go to used <laughs> for like his packages, just stuff down to that. Um, and my biggest, like my all time big project that I've, is basically the reason I started this company uh, is my Mandalorian project. Um, I probably could have had it done in a year if I really worked on it, but since I've been working on the Etsy store alongside with it, it's just taken like almost three years now to make this. But uh, making a full set of Mandalorian armor, like just getting the paint done right, uh, I'm really nitpicky when it comes to this stuff. So I think that helps a lot with my profession, but uh, when it comes to my own personal projects, it can be irritating. But just getting the details right, uh, getting the paint, like the pen striping correct, and um, everything just needs to come together the right way. But this is just the helmet. I have like all the armor. I'm so close to being done. Um, hopefully, eventually having like my first first cosplay um, would would be really cool. Just seeing uh, seeing how the whole store has come together. Uh, that's kind of what that. That's what the Mandalorian project means to me. It's just kind of, it's every aspect of the store. It's leather working, it's prop making, it's uh, coding. You know, it's it's taught me so much. Uh, just a crazy amount. It's taught me so much. So where I see this store going um, is hopefully I'm getting better. Uh, I, I've seen the improvements. I know I'm getting better. So uh, every year is... Uh, I get better and better and better. Uh, so hopefully in the future, I'd like to have my own studio, like an actual separate studio from a house, um, and maybe have assistants, uh, people that can help me, uh, or people that can eventually uh, obtain a full-time job with me. That would be really cool too. Um, but definitely have like a studio, have people working for me, or with me, I prefer with me. Uh, working for me just sounds kind of odd. Um, I've never really liked working for anybody, that's why I started this. Um, but eventually, like I said, have a studio, uh, maybe help with some movie productions or get uh, by word of mouth, uh, start working with movie productions, that'd be really cool, or even like shows, local theater productions would be really cool. Um, really just kind of getting out there. Um, more than just what I'm doing right now. So a good starting point to this profession would be to just start doing it and doing it uh, preferably as a hobby. I mean, not every not everything is going to take off. Not everything you do is going to be your next career. Um, but doing it as a hobby. I mean, when you start out, you could literally go to any store, buy really cheap supplies, and just try and make uh, something that you love from that movie or from shows or anything. Uh, even like, if you're a really big fan of like medieval stuff, you can start making your own armor, or start making uh, your own swords and things like that. Uh, really just doing it and uh, 
trying to improve your skills. I mean, uh, I think, I mean, everyone says that it's like, oh, it's a matter of just doing it. But it, it with this profession, it's it's huge that you just have fun with it uh, and you enjoy what you do. Because generally, if you're gonna enjoy it, you're gonna want to improve upon it. I think I definitely want to continue it, uh, see where it takes me. Uh, basically, in the future, I want to be. I want to be known. I want to be the guy that they call to work on movie sets. Uh, and I want to be the guy that people go to that for really nice quality props that uh, basically represent the movies that they just watched from theaters. I want them to be able to grab those and have those on their display.